Hello everyone, I'm Kaluna, and welcome to another episode of Screenshots. Now, I've always had a really hard time trying to pick my favorite of anything. Food, movies, color. My likes and dislikes change a lot, and my friends often say that I have chronic indecision. Which is true. But there's one thing that I've never really had a hard time saying was my favorite. My favorite anime, Princess Tutu. A duck is granted magical girl powers, making her a heroine called Princess Tutu, who saves people through the magical power of dance. I can't count the number of times I've said, okay, now hang on, it's actually not as ridiculous as it sounds. Princess Tutu subverts a lot of expectations going in. Comparing the tone of the first episode to the last, it's a really dramatic shift. The first episode is very lighthearted and comedic. The characters are not very fleshed out, and overall you get a very storybook feeling to it. A reverse Prince Rescues Princess story, but also this world has talking animals in it. But that's what the story wants you to believe at first. The second half of the series moves into a much darker tone, and the reality of the world around our characters threatens to destroy everything they've worked so hard to preserve. That's about as much as I will say before going into spoiler territory, so if you haven't watched the series and are intrigued, please stop now and go watch it. Alright, here we go. Now, for those who don't mind spoilers, here's a quick rundown for the setup of Princess Tutu. A girl named Duck lives in a place called Gold Crown Town and attends a ballet academy, though she isn't very good at it. She runs into a handsome boy named Muto, a wonderful dancer who is very kind to her but doesn't have any emotions. He has a guardian, a boy named Fakir, who dislikes anyone getting close to Muto, and a girlfriend, Rue, who is the best dancer at the academy. Duck finds out that Muto is in fact a prince from a storybook who shattered his heart to seal away his nemesis, the Raven. This led him to becoming emotionless, and the pieces of his heart begin to possess and affect people in the town. Duck meets a strange man named Drosselmeyer, who gives her the power to become Princess Tutu, an extraordinary dancer whose powers help to heal the prince's shattered heart. It is then revealed that Duck isn't human, but a duck given human form in order to protect the prince. Duck then begins to return the prince's emotions one by one, fighting against both Fakir and Rue, who each try to stop Muto from restoring his heart for different reasons. Fakir turns out to be a reincarnation of the prince's knight from the storybook, while Rue is the daughter of the raven who seeks to keep the prince all to herself. Duck does her best to try to make friends with both Fakir and Rue, who do not know her alter ego is Princess Tutu at first. It isn't until much later on that Duck even thinks to question why she was given the power to become Princess Tutu in the first place, and whether or not she should be trying to restore his heart. Drosselmeyer observes Duck as an outsider at first, but later we see just how much he is pulling the strings behind not just her, but the entire town and its denizens. May those who accept their fate find happiness, those who defy it, glory. Adel's words echo one of the main themes of Princess Tutu, the fight between fate and free will. The anime is 26 episodes long, and the series can be cleanly split in half as each of these options that Adel offers. The first half is all about establishing the story and the main character's motivations. Duck's sense of duty, Fakir's overprotectiveness, and Rue's jealousy. Our characters have donned their parts and are acting out in what we believe to be the role suited for them. The first half ends with a fairly traditional climax. Krahi kidnaps the prince and brainwashes him to obey her. Tutu and Fakir, once enemies, must work together to save him. And Tutu communicates her feelings to Muto through her dance, awakening him and saving him from Krahi's spell. Krahi retreats, and Tutu and the prince dance together in celebration of their love for one another. But when we stop to think about it, what was it that made Duck fall in love with the prince originally? What is it about Muto that really makes Duck love him more than just as a schoolgirl crush? Muto doesn't change much. Even when he gains more emotions, his kindness was the one trait he had never forgotten, and it's the one we see him display most of the time. There isn't a ton of complexity to it. Duck wants to return what was lost to him, to try to see him smile. But is that the romantic love that Drosselmeyer has set the scene for? Duck never questions her love for the prince. And while we may think that this is just due to how we enter the story, it turns out that this lack of complexity is a clue to Drosselmeyer's interference. Mostly from the shadows, Drosselmeyer has been pushing the characters in the direction of his own narrative. The characters eventually realize that their actions so far have been engineered through Drosselmeyer's power to bring story to life, and he intends to make it a tragedy. 
Due to Drosselmeyer's love for tragic stories, combined with his reality-bending powers, many people have suffered, an occult called the Bookman killed Drosselmeyer in an attempt to stop him. But Drosselmeyer had managed to write down that he would still be able to write stories after his death, allowing him to affect the world even now. The characters want to break from the mold they were set to be in, now that they know that they are actors on a stage. This anime was the first one I saw that introduced the idea of characters within a story actively trying to fight back against their creator. I'm sure this isn't the first type of story to do that, but it was the first one that I experienced and so far I've yet to see anything else quite match it. Usually with stories involving fate, there's a prophecy of sorts. From Oedipus Rex to Final Destination, us seeing the hero try to fight against what is already a lost battle makes the story compelling. In Princess Tutu's case, it would be like if, halfway through the story of Romeo and Juliet, both characters realize that the story ends with their deaths and they try to leave the stage. The Prince and the Raven, the characters from Drosselmeyer's unfinished story, were stuck eternally battling with no end, while Drosselmeyer lied in wait for someone to take on the role of Princess Tutu. Both characters escaped from the book into the real world where Drosselmeyer is from, and the prince shatters his heart in order to seal the raven away, leaving him emotionless and most of his memories forgotten. Not satisfied with this as a sad ending, Drosselmeyer grants Duck the power to become Princess Tutu, originally a minor character in the story, described as insignificant and one who could never catch the prince's eye. Princess Tutu's role is to restore the prince's heart by confessing her love for him, and she disappears into a speck of light. The last shard of the prince's heart is what gives Duck her power, and confessing her love to the prince will make her disappear. The prince's beloved knight already died in the story, and Fakir is to inherit that fate. Rue, the daughter of the raven, fights Tutu and tries to poison the prince to her side by being the evil Princess Tutu, Princess Krahi. The anime takes a lot of inspiration from Swan Lake, so Krahi is essentially Odile to Tutu's Odette. Due to the raven being sealed away, Rue's role is to act for the antagonist. Duck, Fakir, Muto, and Rue all act according to Drosselmeyer's story, mostly because they don't know any other alternative. How could they, with Drosselmeyer's storytelling abilities woven into the construction of the very town they live in? All of them act in roles they are given because they never stop to consider an alternative. How would you tell Juliet that some jerk named Bill was the one telling her that she needs to die for the sake of his tragedy? When the characters figure out that they are being forced into roles, rather than having chosen them themselves, that is when they begin to fight against Drosselmeyer and the world of the Prince and the Raven itself. Duck was never human and has to come to accept that fact over the course of the story. Drosselmeyer has given her a gift to become not only human, but the legendary dancer Princess Tutu. Duck as a result just goes along with what he says because she doesn't see the true insidious nature of Drosselmeyer. No one wanted the role of Princess Tutu. She returns the pieces of the prince's heart to him, inevitably frees the raven, and disappears after trying to confess her love. Drosselmeyer is only able to find a willing soul in Duck, a naive but good-hearted soul. What Drosselmeyer doesn't realize is that Duck's true strength comes from her conviction, not the power of Princess Tutu's dancing. When her powers are stripped and Duck cannot even talk anymore, she continues to dance despite being pummeled by her transformed friends. Together with Fakir, Duck is able to overcome even Drosselmeyer's will for the story and manages to overwrite the ending, managing to save everyone, the cost being her permanently in the form of a duck. Drosselmeyer tries to drown Duck in her own sorrows when she realizes that giving up her pendant means she loses her powers and becomes a duck again. Over and over again, Drosselmeyer builds up Duck's hope, only to have it come crashing down on top of her. Duck only sees the role that she is given as important. Often, we see this through her frustrations, as she tries to dance as well as her Princess Tutu alter ego, but is clumsy and has a lot of trouble. Duck, through her connections to Muto, Rue, and especially Fakir, is able to pull herself together and try to fight back against the story. Duck is one of my favorite characters of all time, because she truly feels like a well-rounded character. She's naive, clumsy, and a bit of an idiot at times, but she's always willing to throw her all into a fight to protect her loved ones. When Fakir found Muto as a child, he wanted to become a knight who protects him. Over the course of the story, Fakir is unable to, first from Princess Tutu restoring his heart, and second from Rue poisoning his heart shard with raven's blood. 
Fakir is angered because he believes he is meant to take on the role as the knight at first. He even bears the scar of the previous knight, who died protecting Muto. Fakir does not realize that he has been given this role by Drosselmeyer, who already had created one knight who failed to protect his prince. When Fakir finds out he's descended from Drosselmeyer and has his power to bring stories to life, here he finds his true strength. He cannot be a knight, since Drosselmeyer already created this character and his fate. However, Fakir realizes that he can give strength to Duck, becoming her prince and knight combined. Now as a competing author, Fakir manages to stand on an equal playing field with Drosselmeyer's stories. Rue believes she is the daughter of darkness, the villainess who has the misery of looking like an ugly human compared to her handsome bird brethren. She has only known kindness through the prince, so she becomes attached to that one shred of kindness and does everything in her power to manipulate him. The raven allows her to pursue the prince, as he sees this as a possible means of controlling him. Rue becomes aware of Drosselmeyer's observing quicker than the others, but as she believes she is part of the Prince of the Raven's story, she does not expect Drosselmeyer to change her fate. When Rue discovers her true nature as a human stolen by the Raven and raised to be evil, she despairs at everything she does, the life she could have had with the Prince if she hadn't been tainted by darkness. Despite this, she still loves the Prince even when he becomes evil due to the Raven's blood, when he becomes a humanized Raven-like monster. However, it ends up being her confession of love for Muto that awakens him and restores him, not Tutu. Rue has become the true heroine, the true love to Muto. While Duck does care for Muto, Rue has grown up with the prince and come to love every aspect of him. Duck's love is more due to the influences of Drosselmeyer and her role as Princess Tutu. Rue stands by Muto's side despite everything. Drosselmeyer did not take into account the idea that Rue could truly love the prince. He only saw her as a character filling the part of the seductress. Rue starts out the beginning of the series having forgotten her connection to the Raven, and due to Muto's changing personality and her jealousy of Tutu, Rue accepts her fate and becomes Princess Krahi. It's only in the second half of the series, when she sees how Muto has changed and her true parentage, that she begins to doubt the story that had been laid out for her. Together with Muto, they are able to defeat the Raven and create a happily ever after for themselves. Muto, as the one character created originally by Drosselmeyer, does not change too drastically over the course of the story. He suffers the whims of fate more than all of the others, who are merely fit into roles rather than being born from them. Although the Raven's blood causes Muto to become evil, after Rue's confession, he still feels a part of it remaining in him. Muto was created to be this perfect white knight of a hero, with no real flaws other than his self-sacrifice and penchant for being kidnapped. Ironically, the raven's blood causes him to gain a bit more humanity. He understands the darkness that is in every human heart, and takes that with him back into the story. It isn't just the restoration of his heart that makes him truly whole. It's his opportunity to make his own choices now that Drosselmeyer's influence is gone. He and Rue can go back into the story knowing that they are free to make it their own, with Fakir helping along the way. The four core characters each go through an arc of trying to live up to their fate and subsequently breaking free from it. The fact that Duck wants the story to have a happy ending and she pretty much gets it is satisfying. She can't stay a human because that wasn't who she truly was. Duck sacrifices the note of bittersweet at the end that makes it feel more realistic. It's hinted that Fakir is working on his power of story to try and find a way to restore Duck, but it's never said outright and honestly I think it works really well. Duck chooses the life of mediocrity rather than the grand heroic sacrifice brought to life through her power as Princess Tutu, and you don't really see that that often in a lot of stories. The real sacrifice here is that she doesn't get to keep living in a dream. She has to live in a world without magic or talking animals. Sacrifice through a death is seen so often, and it can be done well, it's just much rarer for a story to show that taking the normal ending can be just as meaningful if done right. Duck is such an admirable character, and one that I strive to be more like. She doesn't get a perfectly happy ending, but neither has she been forced to give up her existence for the sake of a story. Duck has found the balance that works without making the ending seem too saccharine and tied up too neatly. To conclude, one last character who I believe is also necessary for discussion is Adel. She is a puppet made by Drosselmeyer to assist Duck in her role as Princess Tutu, and gives vague but sage advice to help Duck come to her own conclusions. 
Adel starts out much like Muto, emotionless, acting without her own will, and while kind to Duck, doesn't have much to her own personality. However, over the course of the first half of the story, Adel starts to display more examples of human emotion, such as her growing fondness for Duck. Adel even tells Duck that she's merely a puppet, and that any warm feelings Duck felt for her were manufactured by Drosselmeyer. Duck doesn't care, she says she still loves Adel, and continues to love her despite her inhuman nature. Adel is shook by this, and ends up going against her master's orders and sacrifices herself in order to help Duck escape from Krahi's trap and save Fakir's life. Adel has finally made a choice of her own will, but in doing so, ends up dying in the process. It isn't Drosselmeyer's power, but Duck's, that allowed Adel to change. Adel's body is reconstructed into a new doll named Uzura, a distinctly different person from Adel. She is childlike, emotional, and openly affectionate to Fakir and Duck, her two caretakers. Uzura displays more human-like qualities despite the fact that she isn't human. Uzura's influence is what allows Duck and the others to begin to rebel against Drosselmeyer's story due to her ability to weave between the real world and Drosselmeyer's world. Adel's transformation into Uzura shows how she too has gone from a puppet of fate to a person with free will. She can spend time with Duck whenever she wants, and is able to make choices of her own. Uzura can also cry and display emotion, something Adel was incapable of. What was once the most inhuman and controlled character in Drosselmeyer's story now becomes a powerful ally to Duck and her friends. Adel, like Fakir, Rue, and Duck, sheds her old identity given to her by Drosselmeyer and takes on a new form. As Uzura, she acts as a strong, emotional support for both Duck and Fakir as they begin to break down upon realizing their tragic fates waiting for them. No longer must she happily accept her fate. Now, she can defy it and change the ending of the story. Overall, Princess Tutu resonates so strongly with me because it takes a lot of the setup to a traditional story. A princess, a knight, a prince, a villainess, and turns it on its head. The princess becomes a duck, the knight becomes a writer, the villainess becomes a princess, and the perfect prince becomes imperfect, and that's okay. The storytelling is done so well. It sets you up into believing one version of the story, only to show that the storyteller does not have your best interests at heart. Creations fighting against their creator while still trapped within the confines of a story is such a fascinating study of fate versus free will. And hey, if you can add some great classical ballet in there and make it work, then all the power to you. So, yeah, I hope you guys have a better understanding of why Princess Tutu is my favorite anime. Yeah, on one hand, it's an anime about a magical ballerina duck battling the forces of evil with the power of Tchaikovsky. But it's also an anime about defying your fate and choosing your own form of happiness. If you've watched Princess Tutu before, what did you like about it? Who are your favorite characters? And was the ending satisfying? Comment below, I am always in the mood to talk about Princess Tutu. If you liked this video, feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on my various social media platforms, links below, to keep updated on future videos and live streams. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Screenshots. I'm Kaluna, and I'll see you in the next one. everyone, I wanted to take this opportunity to give a quick reminder about how Patreon works. It's a website that allows you to pledge a certain amount of money per month to your favorite content creators, allowing us to actually make a career out of this. Depending on how much you pledge, you get a variety of rewards in exchange. Some of my rewards for you include having your name in the credits, joining my Discord chat room, and getting early access to my videos. Or, at the highest tier, you can even choose something for me to review. Every little bit counts, so even if you can only do $1, that really builds up over time and helps me to make this show even better. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.